hey guys what's up in this tutorial we'll be covering the throw mechanics from brawl stars in previous tutorials we covered player movement and shooting mechanics so let's get started so we got this empty object player shooting and we added everything under this empty object such as main camera canvas and our player model and even our attacking scripts I'll start by explaining why we did so. Think of it as a multiplayer game. So I made a prefab of it. I'll drag it from our assets folder to test if everything is working. And yeah, everything seems to be working fine. So now in Photon, we can simply do photon network dot instantiate to instantiate this prefab. We'll cover all that later on. But for now, let's duplicate our player shooting object and I'll name this player throw. I'll drag it to our hierarchy and we'll be making changes to our player throw object. Let's start by removing the player attacking script from our attack trail and in place of it I'll add a new script. I'll name it player attacking underscore throw and I'll change the player attacking script's name to player attacking underscore shoot as we covered the shoot mechanics in that script. Make sure to change the class name as well. In our throw script I'll copy all the content from our shooting script. We'll have to make changes in our joystick. Earlier we were simply calling our player attacking script. So we could call the player shooting function which was basically instantiating bullets on pointer up of our joystick. But now we'll have to give reference to our player attacking throw script as underscore throw script as well. So I'll start by giving reference to our player. Our player would be attack trail as it would be hold holding our player attacking script. So now I can simply make an if else statement to see which script the attack trail is holding and we can get that script and call the play shooting function of that script. I'll also make a string for our switch case statement and if our player attacking underscore shoot script is not equals to null we'll make this string equals to shoot and else if it's holding our throw script we'll make the shoot type equals to throw. I finally gave reference to both the scripts and now we can simply make a switch case statement. So if the case is shoot, we'll do player shoot dot player shooting function. Case is throw, we'll do player throw dot player shooting. Okay, so all this you see in the player throw script was covered in the second part of the series in which we covered the player shooting mechanics. So I'll start by making a public vector 3, an array of vector 3. I'll name it bullet points. So this will tell our bullet the path that it should travel. In start, I'll make the array size as 9. I'm setting the size as 9 because the position count of our line renderer is 10 and the 0th index won't be getting included in our path as that's the point where the bullet will be getting instantiated at. Now if you see the position of our line at 0 index, it's basically a transform dot position, but I'm adding one on our on our transform y position. So it looks like we are throwing the bullet from our hand. Now earlier we made a straight line for uh, shooting mechanics and we even used raycast. I'll remove that and I'll make a for loop for setting the points. We'll start the loop at one and the maximum value will be 10. All right, so the next part can be a bit tricky. Uh, we'll be setting rest of the points of our line giving that curvature making the bullet travel on this line is a piece of cake now inside the for loop we'll do line render dot set position at i index and again i'll just state that our for loop is starting at one index because we set the zeroth index just before the for loop now let's make a new vector 3 for the position We'll do line render dot get position i minus one dot x for the x axis of the vector three, and we'll add attack joystick dot horizontal to it. Now the curvature will be set at the y axis, but for now I'll just make it zero. In z axis we'll do the same thing as our x axis, but this time we'll get the z position of our last index, and we'll add the attack joystick dot vertical to it this is how it should look for now we should be able to increase and decrease the distance in x and z axis now to make the curve i'll use mathf dot cos i made a float value line power underscore y which we'll be passing into mathf dot cos 
and I'll multiply this value with i and I'll normalize this i value by multiplying it with 0.1f now we'll just multiply this mathf.cos with i I'll show you how the curve should look by now for this I made the line power y value as 2 and we'll reduce the height a bit of our curve by multiplying this i further with 0.4f this value is basically to control height this is how the curve should look by now one thing I noticed was the line's position at one index wasn't looking smooth so I'll set this value manually by checking if i is equals to 1 just before mathf.cos if it is 1 I'll set the value as 0.3f I came up with this value by testing it as a public field. You can see the curve is much more smoother. Now inside the for loop itself, we'll set the bullet points, the array of vector 3 that we made. I'll set, set its value equals to line render dot get position at i. Actually it should be bullet point i minus 1 as that array will start from 0 index. So we made a bullet prefab in our last tutorial that we were instantiating in our player shooting script. In our player throw I did the same thing. I made a bullet throw object which is basically just a spare. And inside this bullet throw object I'll be making a new script. I'll name it bullet throw script. Now inside our bullet throw script I'll start by giving reference to our player throw, player attacking throw and I'll also make a new array of vector 3, I'll name it points. Now in start we can simply get the attack trail as it will be holding the player attacking throw script as only the throw script can instantiate bullet throw prefab. At this point we can access the array of vector 3 bullet points that we made in our attacking script. We'll simply copy it to our points from 0 index. Don't forget to set the size of the points first. I'll also be accessing the rigid body in our bullet. Now let's move to update. In update, I'll be moving our bullet prefab in the forward axis and I'll multiply it with float value speed. And I'll also make a boolean, I'll name it throw. And in update, I'll check if throw is equals to true make a transform look at our point I'll make an integer to store the current index of our point at which our transform will look at I'll name the integer current index now we can pass it as the index of our point and for the else if we can check if the square magnitude of our point at current index minus transform dot position is less than 0.2 and if so then we'll increment our current index so our transform can look at the next point i'll set the speed value of our bullet as 0.1 now let's test it out by now we should be able to shoot the bullets but we are getting an error in our console for index out of bound so let's fix that in the else if we'll check if the current index is equals to 8 then we'll just enable the use gravity of our rigid body or else we'll look at towards the point at current index. So now we shouldn't get any errors but right now these bullets are not getting destroyed. So I'll just use on collision enter to destroy the game object. We ain't decreasing any health right now that's why I commented decrease health if the bullet collides with the game object with enemy tag instead of straight away deleting the game object on collision you can even make a coroutine to delete it after a few seconds so that's what I went ahead and did I'm destroying the game object after 0.3 seconds and I'll start this coroutine in our on collision enter another really important thing is that we are not forming this curve close to the player so for that we'll open our player through script and we can simply change this value for our attack joystick horizontal and vertical to 0.01 and now we are able to attack even closer to the player that's it for the video i hope you guys found it helpful if you all did then please leave a like and do subscribe to the channel thank you